Hey everyone, this week I'm going to teach you about using comments in your EV3G code. Comments are a feature that are included in most programming languages, and EV3G also has them. Now, comments are the most useful piece of code that doesn't do anything, which sounds bizarre because their usefulness derives from the fact that they don't do anything. And the reason behind this is, is comments allow you to put notes in your program. Now, it's proper programming etiquette for anybody who does software for a living to leave lots of comments throughout their code. It's a process called annotation, where they'll go through their entire code and they'll write little comments based on what the code is doing right now, or they'll write little values. Or sometimes in the case of a text-based programming language like C, which I have some experience in, uh, they'll use a comment to do something called commenting out the code, where they want to remove a piece of code that's there, and they'll just use a uh, comment on either end, and it'll temporarily remove the code without completely deleting it. So it's there, but it just doesn't do anything. Now, for the sake of EV3G, we have a little block that allows you to type text into it, so you can keep notes on what you're doing, and a lot of people will also use comments to prototype their programs before they actually make them with EV3 blocks, a type of pseudocode. So I'll show you all of this today. Now, I have the EV3 software open, and I have a program open available, so I can show you examples of how we can put comments into programs. Now, in the EV3 programming language, they provide us with two different ways to put program, um, comments into our program. The first way is to use the comment block, which is under the advanced section of the programming software, this blue tab right here. And this works just like any other block, and you would put it in line in the program, like you can put it through the programming sequence. Now, of course, like I said, since it's a comment, it's not going to do anything, but it helps to label the program in line as it's going through its progression of blocks. And that's what the usefulness of this is. However, it becomes a little tricky to use these because you're really only, um, you really only have three lines available before it starts hiding the rest of your text. Now, really, you can type as much as you want in here but after you've backed out of the block only three lines become immediately available you'll have to click on the block again and then scroll down to see the rest of what you've written so that's something to keep in mind if you're using these blocks that if you take a screenshot of the program and you want the comments to appear only the first three lines of the comment will appear the alternative to using this is to come up here we have a comment up here and what this does is it gives you a text box now this could be resized as large or as small as you want and in any proportions but this just allows you to type whatever you would like in this box here and um, like I said it can be as large as you, or as small as you want and these unlike these blocks are actually going to be alongside of your program so these can be dragged around wherever you want they'll be free floating alongside the program and this is also useful for labeling um, things if you want uh, to be outside the program and it'll give you more space this would be your best option if you have a lot of stuff to write but you still want it all to show up in a screenshot because like I said this won't display everything now of course your next question is bound to be what am I supposed to be writing in these comments now that's up to you as the programmer because like I said the purpose of the comments is to help the programmer understand what they've done maybe a few months down the road you forgot a few things or also anybody who's going to be looking onto your program like say you're participating in FLL you're going to want comments to more clearly illustrate to your judges what's happening where in the program and even why now what I recommend is uh, comment on the progression of what's happening in the program so right here we're defining some variables so I may uh, want to define um, a comment that just says variables so I know that I'm just defining my variables right here and right here I'm going to be calculating the error from the color sensor so I m want to make a comment that's going to say that so calculate error from color sensor and that way if you do this throughout your entire code you're going to eventually create a little outline for yourself where it's going to have a little note and tell you briefly what it's doing at each step so you can keep track of what's happening where in the program. The other thing you may find it useful to do is to write down sensor values that you have. Like 
I would find this type of comment more useful for this. So let's say my target light value is 35%. I could write up here light value 35% or something to that extent. That way I know the value of all of my variables and I can have them written down here for easy reference. Now of course this value is right here but let's say we had the variable defined somewhere deep in the program I wouldn't have to go and look in the program to find out what the value is. I know I have it written right here as a comment. One last thing on comments is like I said they can be anything you want and they can really be as detailed or as sparse as you like them to be. Generally the more detailed your comments are the better. I tend to go a little crazy with my comments and sometimes probably borderline excessive but it never hurts to have too much because it always helps with your own your own understanding and um, somebody else who's looking at your program's understanding. I'm now going to show you my proportional line follower program annotated sporadically with comments. Now as you see I've just done some very sparse annotation here. All I'm really doing is labeling what it's doing at each part of the program and annotating the code can really be as much or as little as you want whatever you find helpful because really it's going to be your decision because you're doing it for yourself as the programmer to keep track of what's happening where and for this this was enough for me to keep track of what's happening in the program and it makes it easier for me to refer back on later now the final thing I want to talk to you guys about today is the application of comments in pseudocode now pseudocode is something that a lot of programmers will do before they write the actual operating like the actual program and what pseudocode does is it allows you to determine what you want your robot to do and where before you actually write the code so you already have a clear organization scheme for your thoughts and it kind of just it just makes it the programming process a lot easier and more streamlined and so you can do this with comments in EV3G so if you pretend each comment is like a block and you write in in language instead of um, programming what you want the robot to do at each stage so I can say move forward 30 rotations then I can say wait for black line then I could say stop motors and then finally I could say something like 90 degree turn left with gyro and that way I've just created simple um, simple pseudocode for a really small simple program and I've already outlined what I want the robot to do at each stage of the program so I, I know to program my robot to move forward 30 rotations wait until it sees the black line then stop and then make a 90 degree left turn with the gyro I've already organized my thoughts so I know exactly what part of the program needs to go where in order for the robot to execute what I want to do next so that's something I very highly recommend is um, building pseudocode using comment blocks in EV3G, a very useful strategy. Thanks for watching my tutorial this week. If you found it helpful, be sure to subscribe for more tutorials like this every week. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, be sure to submit it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.